how six nations is showcasing the rise and rise of the kick path. Among the armory of attacking weapons at the disposal of the game's playmakers, the cross kick is becoming one of the most potent of all. In recent seasons, the term kick pass has been added to rugby's lexicon, such as the precision that modern kickers have brought to the deployment of certain types of cross kick, which have emerged as a response to the ever-increasing aggression and organization of defenses. Like a master archer, Finn Russell unpicked England's defense at Mee Field last week by reaching twice in quick succession into his quiver, sending arrow-like crossfield kicks arcing across the pitch. His first was from right to left, where he found Duhan van der Merwe, then he drew back his bow and taking aim in the opposite direction, found Luke Cowan Dickey badly exposed on the right, and Scotland were awarded the game-changing penalty try. In sharp contrast, on a day when England had plentiful possession, but struggled to find a way around a swarming Scotland defence, Marcus Smith fluffed one of his side's best scoring opportunities in the 30th minute, spotting Henry Slade free in acres of space on the right, but overhitting his cross kick. Paolo Garbisi, the Italy fly half, proved that he is adept at the skill, by finding Tommaso Menoncello, his wing, just inside the touchline with a perfectly delivered punt to score the first try of the game against France last Sunday. The mastery of this weapon, and the tactical awareness of when and where on the pitch to use it, is a crucial part of the modern fly half skill set. Kicking across the field is nothing new, of course. Like so many things, the contestable crossfield kick was appropriated from rugby league, and in the 2003 World Cup final Lot Takiri rose above Jason Robinson, two former rugby league players, to score the only try against England for an Australia team coached by Eddie Jones. More recently, the aerial abilities of wings have become almost as important as their ability to beat a man. But the kick pass, a lower trajectory kick across field, in behind the onrushing defense, has grown to be a much bigger part of the game in recent seasons. The yin and yang of defense and attack has led to defending teams seeking to move up ever quicker and to cramp the space of the attacking team, jamming in from the outside, rather than pushing the attackers out towards the touchline. Bases between each link in the defensive chain have invariably been shrinking, making the midfield areas more congested, but leaving space in wider channels. Defenses have become more and more aggressive in recent seasons, and sometimes a really aggressive defense can tighten up and get a bit narrow. Jimmy Gopperth, the Wasps fly half, said, The quickest way to get the ball to the space is a crossfield kick pass, with flat trajectory that gives the defense no time to recover. The search for space is the coach's holy grail and the introduction of the 50 colon 22 kicks this season, another item borrowed from rugby league, has helped to open up fresh opportunities, particularly from the middle third of the pitch. The kick pass is about trying to exploit the space between the two defensive lines, Phil Dowson, the Northampton Saints assistant coach, said. The front line of defense has become so structured and organized, and the backfield coverage, depending on field position, will be thinking about the 50 colon 22. Along with the technical skills of the number 10s and number 12s, developing the ability to put the ball on a precise point that can get you on the front foot in that space between those defensive lines. You can't pass the ball forward, but you can kick it forward, and that's the next best thing. These increased opportunities have meant fly halves devote more and more time to honing their kick passing skill. You definitely practice it a lot more nowadays, Gopperth said. We practice our flat trajectory kicks, standing 20 meters apart, trying to hit each other in the chest. The key to the technique is getting your chest over the ball. If you drop the ball nice and low, that brings your chest over the ball that little bit more, and that helps to keep the ball flight low. You don't want to give the winger any recovery time to spin round and make the catch, so that trajectory is important. The first of Russell's masterful 1-2 against England was a smartly judged kick pass. From a Scotland scrum on the right, van der Merwe stood out on the left touchline, but Max Mallins, his opposite number, was defending 15 meters infield, leaving space outside him. Russell sent his kick diagonally over Mallins' head for van der Merwe to run onto. Mallins spun to recover, but van der Merwe was past him in an instant, then brushed off Freddie Stewart too, leaving England scrambling to reorganize in the backfield. Then came Russell's follow-up, from the ruck on the left, where Mallins had been tackled inside the England 22. Because Joe Marchant, the right wing, had been required to come across and cover for Stewart, England were short of numbers on the opposite side. Darcy Graham, the Scotland right wing, stayed close to the touchline and the three widest England defenders were Will Stewart, Joe Marler and Cowan Dickey. This time Russell's kick was of a higher trajectory, a contestable cross kick, knowing that Graham had the beating of Cowan Dickey in the air. Clearly, the England hooker erred by batting the ball into touch, resulting in his yellow card and a penalty try, but that England's entire front row had been left in such wide positions showed how comprehensively Russell had unraveled the English defence. It was either very good coaching from Scotland, poor awareness by England, or a bit of both, Dave Walder, the Newcastle Falcons head coach, 
said, From the initial scrum, you'd be expecting either your blindside flanker or your scrum half to drop back and look after the side where the scrum was held. England didn't. Young's traveled all the way across, so the number six would have been better to look after that wide defense, not Cow and Dickey. Marchant could have stayed over that side, but that would have left a gap in the middle of the backfield, and Russell will pick out those gaps all day long. A team's cross-kicking game will also be tailored to the strengths of their wings. Those sides whose wings are particularly strong in the air will be more likely to send contestable cross-field kicks, particularly in the final third of the pitch, where the backfield defense will not be quite so deep. If your number 10 gets his kick right, those kicks can be almost impossible to defend, Walder said. As an attacker, the catch is your best prize, but slapping it back towards your own side is also really effective, because you generally have more support around the ball than the defender. The defender has to try to catch it, which is a hard skill to perform above your head. That's why Russell was putting that second kick on top of Cow and Dickey, rather than in behind him.